Hi, welcome to Chapter 9 of tutor Tutorial 7 for Heritage Offices. In this tutorial we are looking at organic groups and assigning the group's audience to the property so that impact assessors and property owners are able to access the uh, various archaeological, paleontological sites on their properties in addition to other marked heritage resources which do not reside in organic groups. This is typical of a situation where you have a large recording group like UCT or the KZN Museum which goes out records thousands of archaeological sites and they manage the um, access to those sites and the coordinates um, quite closely within private organic groups. Um, heritage officers at the various heritage authorities are members of the organic groups for those larger groups and are therefore able to create subgroups at the property level in which they can place um, the property owner and the um, impact assessor for a particular case. Um, we do not want to simply give out the uh, full organic group sites listing out in the public domain. It's on a per application basis that the organic groups are subdivided. So let's look at that. So this user is a member of the uh, ECRAG group for this demo and the ECRAG group has hundreds of sites in their um, organic group. When I go to explore sites um, update group fields for sites I'll see the sites into which I have access rights uh, for this user. Um, it's a large number because many of the sites are not inside organic groups but those are, that are um, I I'm able to see um, that this ECRAG group is highlighted, for instance, for these ZUV sites, and they are set to private. Um, the list of organic groups that the Heritage Officer has access to is also listed in the group's audience, and if I was logged in on uh, another account, this list would change depending on who the user is. There may, may be no um, organic groups at all, um, or there, there might be uh, quite, quite a number of organic groups depending on the, who it is. So the process is very easy. Um, we are first going to have a look at a, an area and um, let's start with uh, sites with full pop-ups and I know that ECRAG has a series of sites starting with GR, uh, the Khrotra feed area. Um, so I'm going to zoom in there and then I'm going to so filter the site starting with GR and I'm going to look at the farm that that particular property is on and I'm going to assign the owner uh, of the Hrotrophy property to the organic group and I'm going to create the organic group for that property. So let's look at this area. So let's enable the cadastral layer um, let's pick out the Western Cape one. That's great. And then the farm that I'm interested in, for instance, let's say it's this one, um, 317, and let's enable the 1 in 50,000 map to get the farm name. Okay, so farm 317 is Tybor Scroll. Tybosh Crawl 317. So let's look at Saurus and see if we can find that property. Tybosh Crawl 317. Um, I don't think that property is being created. Um, my, maybe it was set as Tybosh Crawl, it's possible. So there's nothing under properties. So it's almost certain that this property needs to be created. Um, and let's have a look at some of those sites um, on the property. Um, so this one here is GR11. Let's go off to that one. And let's have a look at what property was listed for this one. It's been added to Roy Mace 315, um, which
which is actually this property here. So that's not correct. So three almost three one five is up there. So type or scroll three one seven should be added. So let's add that property <coughs> and then we'll remove this one. So just double check here. It's not already type or no. Okay, so let's create it. Okay, type Five rather. Okay, and it's um, let's put in these in Cedarburg, and the owner um, I know is um, Esther Hazens. Um, right there we go. Okay, great. So we have our owner logged. We have the property in the system. Um, it's Actually, I think a combination of owners in this particular property, but this is just uh, an example. Um, let's just use the demo account. I don't know if it offend anybody um, <laughs> who owns the property. Um, and then this would normally fi be filled in with the very specific property owners for, for that land. Um, okay, so now this type or scroll. Um, property we're going to use. I'm going to remove Roy Mace because I wasn't correct for that this particular site. Um, and then I could immediately um, set the group's audience at the level of the site, but um, I'll do it on the, um, <coughs> the manager under explore. So let's go back here. And so it's explore sites, update group fields for sites. Um, while I'm searching for that, let's have a look at um, the um, property uh, information again because I've got a feeling I didn't tick the group tag. So let's just edit that property. Ah, there, I needed to tick group for this. That makes it an organic group. Hit save. And I, now I will see the audience, the uh, property appear if I refresh this. So um, let's Okay, now Tybosh Crawl 315 is also available to, to my audience list. Um, I'm not going to do it on the site level, I'm just going to go to the home and I'm going to refresh my group audience manager. Right, let's pick out the GR sites. So let's starts with. Now I should have kept the other one open. Let's quickly get that back. Explore sites of earth for pop-ups. And let's zoom in over there. Okay, and let's pick out farm 315. Okay. So, it might be 317 actually. Um, yes, it actually is 317 after all. I'm getting confused with Roy Mace. Um So I'll, I'll edit that in a sec um, to 317. But the these three sites are clearly on 317. So their audience belongs with this property. It may be that the, o the same owner has this, these two properties. Um, and then you may create a, a property name which has multiple farms, but generally stick with the cadastral information, which is easier um, to manage in the long run. So let's uh, let's have a look um, at this site. So it's GR11. Um, let's change to our aerial map. So we can zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, so GR11. Um, and GR30 and GR29. So let's pick out those. Um, GR29, GR30, and GR11. GR30. I think they have a 
a space in them. Okay, there we go. So it's private, that's great. Hold the control key down and click on the other property. So now it's not just a member of the ECRAG group, but it's got a sub audience of the property just for those sites relevant that we're picking out. Similar to 29. And we can go to GR11. Let's just go straight there, and hold on the control key. If you don't hold the control key down, it will take the selection onto the one you've just clicked. So it's auto-saving as you click. So now it's just ecrag, and I'm holding the control key down again, clicking on Tybosh Crawl, and it's saved. You don't have to click on Save at all. That's, um, that's updated it in one click. That's all there is, really, to... Um, setting the audience. Now, um, if I was a member of Tybush Crawl, so I'll, I'll have to look at Tybush Crawl, so let's um, have a look at Explore My Content, because I created that Tybush Crawl property. I'm going to edit the number uh, to 317, and that's it. Save that, and then I'm going to go to the group tab and I'm going to look at the list of people that's myself as the applicant uh, user so this is the it should normally be your username as the heritage officer then um, you might want to add people and this is where you would add the impact assessor's name and the property owner and add them as users don't make them administrative users just make ordinary users add them to the group and they will then be able to access the property, uh, the archaeological information for those sites on that property and carry on with their impact assessment. So it, it doesn't take very long um, and it's uh, on a use, use case basis. So as an impact assessment comes in, you can um, designate the audience not only to the main pr um, recording group but also to the subgroup for the property level. And that's all there is to it. So I'll stop the tutorial for groups management right there.